day of the Bowls Ladies Tour in the Netherlands saw the peloton move further south to the small town of Gnep, lying next to the Meuse River. Ahead of them lay a flat 129 kilometer stage with three circuits of the surrounding countryside. Given the parkours, it looked to be a day for the sprinters. I would always like to be at the pointy end of um, stages like this, So, but it's also the Netherlands and you never know what's going to happen. Um, for sure, teams like Bowles and Sunweb need to try and isolate Anamik and see what they can do from there. So um, it's up to my Cipollini team and I to sort of just um, make the most of that and take the opportunity when it comes. I really enjoy racing in the Netherlands and it sort of brings me back to where it all started for me. Um, so I haven't raced here that much this year so it's definitely nice to be back and um, yeah hopefully can try and get some results. <laughs> First of all, I'm really happy that today is flat. Uh, it's a bit windy, so um, hopefully there is some good direction today. Uh, but yeah, we are here to defend the, the leader's jersey from Anamik, um, so we will see how, how it goes in the race. I'd, I'd love to sprint today, um, but yeah, we don't know if it's going to be a bunch sprint. So um, the first goal for our team is to defend the leader's jersey, and then in the end, if it, if it all stays together, then, uh, then I'll have my chance. Too windy, flat. I don't know, it's going to be, I saw a lot of uh, smallings during the way out there, so it's going to be hectic, but yeah, a fast day. We'll see out there, we have more cars to play, even though we're four left, but still we have a few good cars on our hands. It's a hard tour, but I'm looking forward for it. Today's action really kicked off just over halfway through the stage when a group of 13 riders broke away and within five kilometres had built up a gap of around a minute. They not only included world champion Chantel Black and the Canyon Srams Hannah Barnes, but also Sunweb rider Lucinda Brand, who sat fifth on the GC at the start of the day, at only 32 seconds down on orange jersey wearer Annemiek van Vleuten, making her the virtual race leader on the road. Van Floyten's Michelin Scott teammate Gracie Elvin was also in the group, but playing a tactical game, sitting on the back without any obligation to work. The breakaway's lead was being reduced in the meantime, and as the race entered its final hour, they had just 30 seconds on the main pack. Entering the last 20 kilometres, the gap stood still at around half a minute. But the likes of Michelin Scott and Ali Cipollini chasing behind, some of the breakaway riders were beginning to get itchy feet. With 9k remaining and the gap now just 17 seconds, FDJ's Lauren Kitchen and Park Hotel rider Natalie Van Gogh decided that they couldn't wait any longer and went off the front. Sensing an opportunity, Elvin soon joined them, followed closely by Brand and Valcar's Ilaria Sanguinetti. The five were only together for a short while, before being reeled back in by their breakaway companions. But there was still time for one last daring attack, courtesy of Virtue's cycling Barbara Guresi. With just 2k remaining, the Italian decided she still had something left in her legs and went solo. But as the person swallowed up the chasers behind, it was clear her move was all but doomed. With everything back together at the front as they went under the red kite, the sprint teams began setting up their riders of choice. Amy Peters led Bowles Dolman's teammate Emily Diedrichsen into the home straight, with Jolien Dorr lurking on her wheel and Park Hotel's Lorena Wiebes well placed on the right hand side. But with a crash behind taking out some potential contenders, it was Diedrichsen who hit the line first to secure her second World Tour win of the season. Van Floyten, meanwhile, maintained her 29-second lead atop the GC to earn another day in the orange jersey. It was really hectic. In the beginning, I, I covered a lot of attacks because we thought, actually, they would let a group go, but... Yeah, it took quite a long time before uh, the breakaway went and then we had Chantal in it. Um, yeah, and then in the final sprint the girls did a really good lead out and yeah, I'm really happy I could finish it off. In the peloton I had Megan, uh, Anna and Amy for, for the lead out uh, and Megan covered me in the beginning and then in the really final Anna took the first pull and then Amy and then I could, I could do the sprint. Um, it was quite hectic but I'm really happy that we could take a team win today. Just, it's my, my, my first race of coming back from a broken collarbone at the Giro, so 
I'm going into it with a bit unknown fitness, so I just want to just go out there and just empty myself a bit this week and just prepare for the world as best I can. But yeah, it's always going to be an aggressive race. There wasn't loads of wind today, so uh, you, it was like one of those days we had to be really, really um, awake and um, just be up there and present. And I, yeah, they, I mean, there was a break of 30 that went away quite early, and then. Um, yeah, the, the second one went with Lisa in with about five riders and then a few of us went over over to it and yeah, we worked really well together. I mean, um, we got, I think the max was a minute and then it came down to, to 30 seconds and it would loiter around there for a bit. But yeah, it was good. It's, uh, it's a hard day out there today. So I am, um, this is quite a surprise to get the most aggressive rider. So um, I'm happy for that. Confirmation of the results then, with Weebus coming in second ahead of Door, as Valcar's Maria Giulia Confalaneri just misses out on a podium place. And in the GC, Lucinda Brand leapfrogs teammate Leah Kirkman into fourth, after earning two bonus seconds on the day.